Welcome to a new year of Kiefer's Corner. I'm Jeremy Nyger. This is Coach Dan Kiefer. And joining us tonight, you've never seen him on this side of the camera, Nick Pack. So first, Coach, how are you doing tonight? Hey, I'm doing great. New season starts tomorrow. So we have a road trip. We're going to take a trip down to the Madison area, Mount Hor, Barneveld. Um, but we've had two weeks of practice so far. What do you think about this team? We lost a lot of seniors. So what's your where, – where where are you right now, Thursday night, 24 hours from kickoff? Well, I'm excited, that's for sure. You know, uh, you know I guess focusing on our guys, uh, you know, we are returning three starters on offense and three starters on defense. Um, so you're replacing a lot of people. And it's not a secret that we lost a lot of, you know, outstanding football players and, more importantly, outstanding kids. But I couldn't be happier or more excited with what we have. Um, our kids are working really hard. Uh, I, I certainly feel like we have a lot of talent, and uh, they've been practicing, I feel like, at a very high level, which is uh, – I, I really do attribute a lot of what I'm seeing in this year's group to the leadership of the last – last year especially. Uh, in fact, I just had a – I was uh, texting with Colin Fritz last night about how things were going with him, but I just told him, I said, man, you guys really – the imp Impact of a Cal Smith, a Noah Sarauer, uh, you know, a Colin Fritz, a Colton Hush. Those kids are special kids, and they really—I mean—that's the mark of somebody that makes a difference because they're they're impacting this year's team. Uh, that standard that was set. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy with our current guys. You know, uh, the things I've seen from Graydon Monikin, the things I've seen from you know Gavin Sal have been spectacular. I feel like Tayden Holdorf has really like matured and he's 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 doing a fantastic job um sam aho has been great those those four are captains and really the whole senior class i feel like they have they've um adopted a standard and they're holding other people to that standard and it, it's it's really exciting coach i'll ask a question on that, on, that, on that note like i've only been really around this football program a few years you really seem to build a program you talked about last year and the year before and the success you had not only last year year before leads into this year how about going into a non-conference game against a point you're probably not very familiar with where do you weigh into of or trying to get into regular season if you will mentality versus building see who we have what is the, the i mean obviously you want to win don't get me wrong oh, yeah. but yet what's what it, what if you come out of one thing that's Tomorrow night, what's it going to be? Well, you know, we want to see how how it goes, uh, you know, under pressure. You know, when it's a when it's a game, games are different than practice. Games are different than scrimmages. Uh, we're ultimately judged not at how we practice, but how we perform on on Friday night. Um, you know, we're playing a good team. You know, Mount Horb's um, three time defending conference champion of the Badgers Badger Small Conference. They were eleven and one last year. Lost in the level three to Green Bay, Notre Dame. I mean, they have a really good football program. Now, I, I also think they're a bit like us in that they lost a great quarterback that had actually numbers that weren't too too far short of Cal Smith, and they lost a really good running back who had like 1,300 yards. So they've lost some people too. Now, they, they returned, I believe, 19 seniors. Uh, and, you know, they got some, they got some, they had a really good receiver that was, uh, He's number four. I, I, I can't remember the kid's name, and I should because he's a really good player, but uh, uh, he's recognized as one of the best kids returning in the state of Wisconsin. He's, he's a very good, I mean, he's a weapon, you know. So, yeah, we're going to have a big test, but what will I be happy with? Uh, you know, I honestly want us to go down there, and I want us to play great football. I want us to take care of the ball. I want us to communicate. I want us to fly around, and I expect if we play well, I expect that we're going to come back with a, with a, with a victory. Last year, at this time, <clears throat> the question that I asked, and like the, the big question is, we're losing an all-state quarterback. And I think a lot of us were, were well aware that, that Cal, maybe not at the level that he played at, but Cal was going to be very, very good. Yeah. Uh, and he answered every, every question, broke a lot of records. He was, he was great. Unbelievable. That, the answer to the, the question now this year is a little less obvious. Right, we don't have someone right. that is Mason or Cal. Um, we have guys that have played quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we, we saw Graydon when Cal went down. We saw Gavin. Mm -hmm. um, 
what are we going to do this year? I mean, because it's not, it's, it's Cal's job, right? Um, how, how do we answer that question when there's not a, a super obvious answer? Well, um, if you're at practice, there's an obvious answer. Okay. The obvious answer is Gavin Sell is going to play a lot of quarterback. Gavin Sell will also play receiver. And the primary reason he's going to play receiver is because he is great at receiver. Right. And it makes things more difficult for your opponent to prepare. Is he going to play quarterback? Is he going to play receiver? Because he's definitely going to play both. Now, uh, the way we're, we're looking at it is uh, Braden Monikin is a fantastic kid, fantastic leader, and a team first guy. And I really believe that having Graydon play receiver this year, when you put Gavin at one side and you put Graydon at the other side, okay, I mean, obviously, because Gavin is, you know, a Division One athlete, people are going to put a lot of emphasis on stopping Gavin, and if they don't, we'll be very happy. But what's going to happen then is can we make, can we make people pay, you know, with the, you know, not to say we don't have other good receivers because we actually are really good. We have a really good receiver depth. Uh, Bodhi Everts has been, he's been really good. And he's going to be, he's going to be a weapon too. But, but having Graydon out there, uh, just feel like, you know, we're going to give Joe Jensen is going to get a chance to play some quarterback at some point too. And, uh, really impressed with how Joe is coming along and he's, he's got a good arm. And, uh, you know, it's just going to take a little more time and we're, we're bringing him along. But I expect there's going to be a time this year where he's going to be playing pretty significant snaps at quarterback. And, uh, I'm hopeful that he's going to cut his teeth a little bit here against Mount Horb. You know, I'd like to get him some work in the in the preseason, if, if you will, you know. Um, so I'm really excited. And the other thing, like, I look at our team that I just, you know, couldn't really, to be honest, I couldn't be happier. We're replacing 5 0 linemen. Mm -hmm. Okay, five. All right. So we'll have a returning starter. The closest thing we have is Sam A. who played, you know, he was our sixth guy last year, played a lot. Uh, but I am I am just like thrilled with what we have on the O line. Those guys are playing great ball, and it's not I mean it's not just five guys here. I mean we, we, I feel really good like seven eight guys. Um, we're really really doing well. We're we're super athletic. Like our tackles, uh, Trevor Murdoch and Andrew Thompson are just they're not typical high school tackle athletic wise. They are super super quick feet, and they're both big tough kids. You know they're over two hundred pounds. And uh, they're doing really well. And then at guard, you have uh, Drew Stark and Sam Aho. Again, two kids that are really freaking good athletes, and they're tough. And then Will Phelps, kid playing, uh, junior playing center for us, is really, really impressed with Will. Just, I mean, he's a super consistent kid and is smart. And, you know, like, he was under Noah Sarr's wing and saw how you do it and, you know, like how you practice. And I think, again, you know, to, to, to bring that stuff back. So I really feel good. And, you know, we have others, too, that, uh, we, we have uh, Evan Becker, who has really improved. I mean, you know, he started playing football as a sophomore and he lifted hard and working, and he's he's in a position where he's going to really you know, significantly contribute. Had a new kid move in, Noah Delano. Noah, Noah is, uh, boy, you know, like the transformation of him from June to now, like just understanding what we're doing. You know, we had a camp in June, and it's just, it's just, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on there that's 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 pretty exciting. So, um, defensively, it's our second year in in this new scheme we're running, and I just feel like we're just so far ahead of where we were at this time last year. You know, because kids have done it, and it's not brand new. You know, and it's just like boom. You know, you know they, they 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 got it. So it's I'm excited. I feel like we're fast on defense. I feel like we got. You know, it's a, it's 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 complex enough, but it's it's really simple. You know, we can defend different things, but it's good. So I'm I'm very excited. I mean, it's going to be. I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. So you kind of, you kind of stole my thunder because I'm going to ask about the line because I think that is meat and potatoes of a football team. There's no doubt. And, and you went there, and I think a great thing you've done over the last couple years is you put athletes in a great position to be. Athletic. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying offensive line slash defense line aren't athletic, but yet you had a couple years ago Mason Warner and you had a Cal Smith as your Swiss Army neck, we call them. Mm -hmm. And last year Cal Smith comes in and you had Gavin and, and Green as a Swiss Army knife. And so it's so my question then was could be towards the line, which you answered, but now I want to know as a as a coach, how do you prepare for games? And 
do you more prepared like as in hey here's who we are beat us or here's your maybe defaults we're gonna attack that i mean like i know obviously it's it's a little bit of both and i, I say that because we kind of i believe we switched kind of styles a year ago to a more up tempo base mm -hmm. i mean it, if you see an advantage of playing someone that might be to slow the tempo down are you more likely to do that and i'm not trying to give away secrets no no uh, or or are you more likely hey here's who we are beat us yeah is that our game yeah you know I, I think you know like we have you know honestly we have like five run plays okay and we practice them a lot and we practice them against different fronts and you know so obviously we are kind of you know we, we prepare for what we think we're going to see. Uh, but it's not like it's a dramatic change, you know, week to week. So in that regard, it's kind of like we do what we do. But yet, you know, it's like anything. The way you line up, it's really strong for certain things, but there's always something that you're sacrificing. You can't, you know, like, so what we try to do is, is we take advantage pre-snap of alignments. You know, that's, that's a lot of what we do. You like, is it a light box? Is it a heavy box? You know, and it, we're not we're not super complicated, um, but uh, you know, number, space, and leverage. A numbers game. We always talk. I mean, we see that up it's, top. It's numbers, like, numbers, space, yeah. and leverage. Like I, I don't I don't need to break down a million things about hey, this is cover cover three. This is this is quarters. You know, this is man free. You know, we we really try to keep it simple and allow kids to play fast. Uh, our quarterbacks make a lot of decisions, you know, so it's in their hands. And, you know, like I, I try to let them know what I hope they do. I always ask them, you know, like, hey, what'd you see? Uh, you know, so, you know, instead of like jumping on them, you know, hey, how come you did, you know, I, I, oh, well, what'd you, okay, all right, well, hey, if we see that next time, maybe we'll do something different. We try to, you know, kind of bring guys along, make them confident. But, uh, yeah, so I would say, you know, we try to look at what, you know, what we think they're going to align. And then there's, you know, certain formations we will get into that we think give us an advantage. You know, like I will tell you a lot of what we'll do tomorrow will be based on what we, what we think, okay, we maybe have better angles. We, we maybe uh, create, you know, some conflict for certain defenders and what are they going to do? And then, you know, whatever they do, they can do, it's fine. But we'll, we'll either do this or we'll do that, right? You know, so that's kind of how we approach just about everybody. Um, and we try to put in a couple little things that are different, you know, all the time, but we have a really good staff. We have a lot of creative people, so that helps. I want to ask one question, but first, do we have any additions to our staff or changes? We do. We do. We added, uh, we added three. We, we added, uh, Jake Laram, who, uh, is a teacher at, at Viking, seventh, seventh grade English, uh, really good football background, uh, head coached at, um, Elk Mound, uh, coached at Oliva Strum. He was a head coach there for a couple of years, I think, during COVID. And then he also was at Elmwood Plum City. His, his dad uh, coached at Duran, the single wing stuff, way back in the day. Like when I first started, his dad, uh, I coached against his dad. And he's actually about my son Jake's age. Uh, he's been a really, he's very, very great with kids and a nice addition. Another addition we had is uh, Big Joel Benson. Joel played played here, uh, and you know it's been a long time. You know Joel's been out for a bit, but uh, he's back in working with the kids, and I think that's that's awesome. You know he's he's not there every day, but he's you know he it's good it's good. You know it's, it's he's he's working with the O line under Coach Landon, and that's been that's been really good. Uh, and then we also added uh, Charlie Bigno. Charlie had coached at the junior high level, and you know he has a son that's that's a ninth grader and. He's working with the younger kids, and he has some familiarity with them. And, and I think he's really uh, done a good job of – he put some time in the summer working different camps with us. Uh, he seems like he has got – he started out with a very good football background, but I, I think he understands kind of what we're doing and how we're doing things, and it's been a good fit. So I'm excited about, about uh, Coach Bigno. And then we lost Brent Paulson, who, uh, you know, former player. Brent, Brent was working with our younger kids, but his – no, the work situation, it's been difficult for him. he be showing up at practice at 4.30, and it's a, it, it's just a tough thing. And he's, I believe he lives in uh, River Falls now, working in Ellsworth. It just, you know, didn't, didn't work. Uh, my son has not been, Jake has not been around much at all yet. You know, with the third third baby, 
uh, you know, three months old, just three months old, actually. And a shout out to my grandson, Will. I believe uh, today is his actual birthday. He just turned four today. So, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so Jake's been pretty tied up. We're still hoping to get him a little bit, you know, like if we can get him for you know game planning a little bit and in game day, I'd be pretty thrilled with that. So, Jake, the first year we live streamed games, Jake was with me. Yeah. Um, the second year we live streamed games, Charlie was actually up there helping with stats. Okay. So, I'm a little bit worried that it's <laughs> uh, back. Nick is going to end up on the. I mean, hey, my day was done. Hey, I was done. Hudson, you go to Hudson. You got, yeah, you got the experience. Yeah. Well, good. Hopefully, you, you stay up there with me. Hopefully, Coach Cowles don't see this because uh, <laughs> it'll call in you all done very well. And, oh yeah. So, uh, so yeah. the question that I wanted to ask, and we we did this last year too. We talked a lot about personnel on the offense and defense, and, and at, having coached with you for a while, one third offense, one third defense, one third special teams. Yeah. yeah. Less special team snaps than there is on offense and defense. So if you have an advantage in any any facet of your special team, that, that becomes sometimes a real big advantage in a game. It's huge. Davis Paulson was an advantage. Whew. Gus Croning was an advantage. Yes. Now we're in 2024. 2024, we ha- we have we're we're actually pleasantly pleasantly surprised. We have okay. we have this you know we have the kicker the soccer player kicker tradition. The pipeline is flowing. Okay. We got three of them this year. We have uh, we have Russ Chapin. Who is uh, doing a really good job at kicking kicking the extra points? And we have Ethan Fernbenzer, who uh, I would you know it's it's three weeks into it and things can change. Ethan Ethan I think is going to handle our kickoff duties. Seems like he's kicking it a little bit deeper consistently. Uh, and then we have a younger kid, Mason Mellon, who's you know coming out and trying it and learning. He's you know he he's not as experienced as the other two. Those other two have, have worked. Wes worked at it quite a bit, and Fernbenzer is significantly better. He, so, Fern Denzer was did it last year, right? So, this isn't a brand new thing for him. Okay. Wes Chapin, it is new. I mean, Fern Denzer did, I think he kicked some JV stuff last year. So, are we going to get to the point where, like, we have JV football games, JV soccer games, like, the same night, and they just, they change. <laughs> and the varsity soccer games, they just change, and then we do it all on Fridays? Is that? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, gonna just I don't know what's going to happen. I'm just, I'm just glad we got those guys that are, that are uh, helping us out. So, uh, you know, um, I believe Garrett Nelson is going to handle the punting duties. Okay. And, you know, we're, we're just, you know, hoping for consistency there. Feel good about Alec Boyer snapping the ball and, you know, our protection scheme should be all right. Um, yeah. So I feel, you know, I feel good. We actually have spent a lot of time in the off season trying to improve our kick return. Uh, I just felt like, you know, we just haven't really, so we're doing a little different deal there. So hopefully that's going to bear some fruit for us, but, uh, yeah, you know, special teams are huge. And, you know, I, I, I really do think we put in uh, probably more time than most, you know, talking with other, other people. I, I think we do put a lot of time in. We, you know, when we do our two-a-days, basically, that two-a-day is all, that second practice is all special teams. And we teach it and we rep it. And, you know, that's kind of what we've, we've gone to. It's kind of crazy to think about how it used to be we did two-a-days all the time. And now it's every other day, and uh, you know we can get away with doing four two days now, Le- legitimately. That's all you got to do. It seems like we get ready. Maybe we're just getting smarter about how we're doing it. I don't know, but it's uh, it's not quite like it used to be. The fall camp experience. So, oh, I don't know. We're, we're we're going down somewhere south of Madison. I just know I got to be at Nagar's place at like eight o'clock in the morning. Or something. <laughs> I don't know where we're going, but. Where's the tea time tomorrow, first of all? Uh, I don't have time to play tomorrow because we're leaving at 12.30, right? Uh, so I'm not going to uh, – tomorrow is the it's – a, it's a rare Friday when I'm not going to get to get a chance to tee it up. But I, I, will, I will guarantee you the next Friday, if it isn't bad, I'll, I'll get my 18 in. I mean, it's, it's – to be true, uh, you know, when you're in fall camp, it's just it's, – you, you, you don't have time for anything. You don't. So uh, – but when you get into game week and you're retired – you can you can find a way. And that's where I was like, I just see the smile on the face. I see I, you mentioned the word retired, and I just want to say, like, talk a little bit about. We've talked a little bit about the past. We talked about the players that have have gone and how you're replacing them, and you talk about the players that are coming up. And as a coach, like, you just that's what you enjoy. You see, you, you love seeing the kids that are, are either still playing somewhere else or. That play that aren't playing anywhere else, but they're doing so much. Yeah, they're doing right. 
whatever it is. They're being two kids. Yeah, exactly. And now you're raising up the other ones and like just talk about how that much means to you as a coach. Because right now it's, it's tough to find coaches. It, it is. really is. I know I know Mr. Sell is hard tough to find coaches. I always advocate for officials as he knows. Absolutely. Find officials because we need officials. We never win. Right. We're on the same page. We never win. Right. There's no doubt. You, and, I mean just but that is the joy. That is why it, it's the best. It, I just want to hear it's that part of it. Coaching, coaching is a hundred percent relationship business. I mean, that's the best thing. One of the one of the things I enjoy the most, like we have a, uh, a golf tournament, right? We have a, the football golf tournament, and we do it, you know, first week in June. And I want to say this year, uh, I, I think we had like fifteen foursomes that were former players. And it, it just doesn't get better than that, you know, like because you get to catch up and you get to, you know, talk with them and you know, see how they're doing. You know, you go back to the, you know, the Cody Nineman, Bryce Lunzer. I mean, you know, it's great. Shaq, you know, you get to you get to run into all those, you know, the group, different groups of kids. Uh, you know, we have, you know, Jake and and the and the guys in his grade. You know, a lot of times we'll get, you know, a Nick Coltrane sighting. Uh, you know, Riley Anderson is has shown up at, at those, you know, it's just, it's awesome. Um, and it just means everything. I mean, it's great to just, you know, see how everybody's doing and, you know, guys are getting older and they're, you know, they're having kids and, you know, it's, it's just, it's just really cool. And then like and you said, and losses. no, and losses. oh God, no, that's no. And you're, you're every bit as happy to see the kid from the, from the 500 year as you are the kid that went to the state semifinal. I mean, it's just, yeah, there's no doubt. And and then, you know, I also look at, like, you know, looking, as you said, you know, the younger kids. Man, this freshman class, there are some unbelievable athletes coming. I mean, now, we did, I, I was disappointed with the number of kids that came out. We had, a, we had like, ah, five or six kids that you really thought were going to play football, and then they just didn't. We, you know, we tried like heck to get them. Hopefully, they, they make the right decision down the road. But, uh, but that freshman class... Um, Boy, there's some super talented kids. It's going to be really hard to keep them off the field for very long. I mean, you know, like when we're talking sophomores, there's going to be some kids that are going to play as sophomores um, in that group for sure. And yeah, I wouldn't, I mean, there's a couple of them that really aren't that far away from sniffing it this year. Which is tougher as a football sport. I mean, right. I mean, you know, and it's a it, sport you can right. play as a freshman, but football also. Is, I would say that's an indicator of a weak team. You know, like if you've got ninth graders playing, it usually means you're not good. I think we're going to be pretty decent. Um, it's just there's some pretty special kids that are just kind of really, you know, matured beyond their years, you know, physically. Uh, so there's some exciting stuff coming there, no doubt. A lot of speed, a lot of size, athleticism. Uh, very exciting. So a lot of good kids. Do you have any more questions? Or we... Uh... I, I... I don't, unless there's a, a hotel on the way halfway home that we get to stop at because it's going to be. I mean, it, it's going to be a late night. <laughs> it's going to be a late night. Be a late night. So before we sign off, I do this every time. You have some favorite teams, non Blackhawk level, right? So we're talking Badgers and Packers. Absolutely. Okay. Oh, do we have any early thoughts? You know, your your thirty second thoughts on either of those those football teams. Uh, I think Wisconsin, the Wisconsin Badgers would be better. Uh, I, I think the Badgers, if I, if you, I honestly believe they have a pretty good shot at being about nine and three, eight and four, somewhere in there. Uh, I'll, I'll make the bold statement. I think they're going to upset Alabama week three. Um, Are you putting them in the CFP? I'm not, okay. but I am. I am saying that I believe Alabama has got a lot of change. You will never have a better opportunity to beat them. Then at Camp Randall, week three, yeah. you lose Nick Saban, you're not getting better. I no disrespect to Coach DeBoer, who's obviously a great coach. But you don't lose maybe the greatest coach ever and get a ton better. I, I just don't see it. Um, and, you know, we'll see. We'll see what, what shakes out. So I, I think the Badgers will be better. I don't think they're a college football playoff team. I do, I do think that they, you know, I, I, I think there's some toss-up games. I think, you know, like, I think Oregon – definitely an uh, underdog there, significant underdog. I look at teams like Penn State and Iowa. Yeah, that's a toss-up. I think that's a toss-up game. I really do. I think both those are toss-ups. You know they're going to stub their, stub their toe against somebody who they should, shouldn't. Go to Northwestern. Yeah, you go to Northwestern, makes you nervous. Uh, you know, so I, I just, you know, I don't, think, I don't think that's crazy talk. 
But you know, I'll take the under. Okay. Yeah, I saw a thing. I in fact, those the acts. I guarantee that. Oh, well, you go for fan. Oh. <laughs> I'll bet you twenty. I mean, push-ups. how much you want to win? Twenty five pushups. Twenty. Oh, I could. I yeah, you know, I, absolutely. Coach is coach was looking because he's not he's not golfing tomorrow. So that means Donnie's not funding the funding the trip. Right? Oh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> if you if you can make a bet on something else, right? There you go. We, we got that. All right. So the other your other favorite. Uh, pack. Yeah, I think the pack's gonna be a lot better defensively, just because I, I feel a lot better about the the guy that's running the show there. I mean, I there were many many times I didn't understand what they're doing. Now I, it seems like it makes sense. I mean, I haven't done a deep dive. I've been worried about our stuff, but just a little bit that I see, uh, I feel like. Uh, that's an area they can improve, and I, you know, I think they got a lot of young talent. And if their O line stays together. I, I can't imagine they're going to be one of the better teams in the NFL. So, how do you feel about uh, the Badgers and the Packers playing a Friday night game this year? Hate it. Hate it. Why? Why are we? Why are we doing this? Torture. It's just. <laughs> it's just. Don't do that. Don't do that. It's the worst. I think money is the, the uh, correct answer. answer. They, they make enough money on Saturday, don't they? The, uh, whatever, but and yeah, I don't think I don't think anybody's gonna listen to our opinion on that one. No, because we're not the ones that are you know, right. right. The yeah, no, I have to get Peacock to watch that. Uh, to watch that Packer game. I mean, hey, I'll get Peacock. That's fine. I'll stand on my head if I have to, but <laughs> whatever. But um, no, it's it's uh, it is. I, I, I hate I hate college games on Friday night, and I hate pro games on Friday night. I agree. But all right, we're gonna wrap it up tonight. That's Nick. I'm Jeremy. Coach Kiefer, First Keeper's Corner. We'll be live tomorrow from Mount Horb as long as we get reception, but we're going to leave here early afternoon so we can make it there. Uh, about a three and a half hour-ish drive. Uh, we'll get there around when the, when the team gets there. We'll get set up. We'll be ready. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow night.